Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, in this video series, this video series is perfect for my first time painters. And first time painters are those of you that have never painted before or you're painting at home by yourself for the first time or with a group. So these are nice, simple, easy step-by-step -step instructions to help you get more comfortable with your mixing of your paint and with applying paint and with your tools and your brushes. So just have fun as you go through this process. Um, in this particular video series, it's gonna be a series of trees and I recommend that you try each one of the videos. One of the easier things to paint as a first time painter is a tree or a flower or a landscape um, or even a silhouette and check out my silhouette series as well for that. What you're gonna see in the description box below, there is a link to a supply kit and if you're purchasing your own supplies, there's a, a link to show you everything that you need. You can purchase on Amazon or from your local art store or utilize what you already have. So again, as a first time painter, the more practice you give this, the better you're gonna get. And when you're ready to kind of take it to the next level, I want you to check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com. And on that school, I feature my Paint Your Pet class, and it is geared towards first time and beginner painters. And I break down all the steps. You learn about your value scale, which is a uh, core foundational art skill. And it's a skill that you can apply to anything creative in the future. So again, when you're ready to kind of take that next step and learn a little bit more and paint something that you really care about, check out my Paint Your Pet class on my online school. So I think that's enough talking for now. Let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, guys, this is gonna be another fun painting for my first time painters. We're gonna start with our background and start with our light yellows and work darker to get our sunset colors on there. So we're pulling a little bit of white aside, tiny amount of yellow to make a light yellow. And I am using that medium flat brush. And we're gonna kind of start with using an abstract shape in the center and then we're gonna kind of radiate our design um, out from this main shape. So starting somewhere on the left hand side, just gonna be making these kind of weird abstract shape with the light yellow. All I want you to do is just try to slightly mimic the shape that you see on your screen that you see me doing on the canvas. Yours can be a little bit different shape, it can be a little bigger, it can be a little smaller. Um, as we go through the process of our background, if there's a particular color you like more than another one, feel free to add more of that color in your background. Um, same if you want to switch out colors to something I'm not using. Go right ahead and do that. All right, so now you can see that I'm grabbing some of that straight yellow and going around the perimeter of a few of the areas that we did with the light yellow. And you can see that the yellow has a bit more intensity than that light lemony yellow we were using. And you can see that I'm just kind of keeping nice kind of horizontal brush strokes back and forth, keeping this kind of nice linear movement in our background. If you're one of my first time painters, Remember to take a deep breath right now. You're doing great. We do tend to hold our breath sometimes when we're doing something brand new, so don't do that. Um, it is not to your benefit to hold your breath. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna be adding a little bit of orange to our mixture. So we're going that light yellow, um, white and yellow with a touch of orange and going for kind of a sherberty orange color. And your sherberty orange color may be a little bit different than what I made. That's okay. It's just what you made for today. And feel free to adjust if you want more orange, more white, more yellow. Your painting, your call. All right, and again, we're just kind of mimicking the shape that we've already set on there and going around the design that's already in there. You're doing pretty good for an abstract painter. Hopefully it's fun just laying the paint on the canvas and moving it around and transforming a white space into something else. And you may notice that as you overlap your other colors, 
you may be able to blend a little bit. So I do want you doing your background relatively quickly so that way some of your prior colors are wet and you can do some wet on wet blending. If you feel like blending with your fingers, go right ahead and do that. And here you can see I added a bit more orange to the mixture to go a little bit darker. And we're gonna keep going darker until we have the whole space on the canvas filled in. All right, so with some of the more of that darker orange, you can see I'm just putting it in a few spaces. Doesn't have to be everywhere. And get in the habit of kind of looking at your painting from a distance of about three to five feet and looking, seeing what it looks like from that distance. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna be adding a little bit of red to that orange so it makes kind of a burnt orange color. Again, your call, how much you add to the, of this color to your canvas. If you don't want it at all, you can just continue to add with your orange or one of your other colors. Again, kind of using light pressure as I'm overlapping one color into the next, doing some slight wet on wet blending. Hopefully so far you have been so focused on your canvas that you have not thought about other things in your life, other stresses in your life. And that is the joy and beauty of painting. You kind of forget about the rest of the world for a short amount of time. And anywhere that you would like to add some of that extra color or go back and grab one of the other colors, do it now while your background is still wet and make any adjustments before we move into adding other colors or our subject matter on the canvas. So here I went back to some yellow and just kind of going right on top of it. You may need to apply it a little bit thicker, but again, do any adjustment that you need to your painting. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're gonna be moving into yellow and green. We're gonna put our grass on here. And your call, how much yellow, how much green, you can make it to your liking. But we're gonna be filling in that bottom section of our canvas, the grassy area that our tree is gonna come from. And you can see where I overlapped our other colors of the background. And then you're gonna be filling in that space with your green and yellow mixture. If you're using student grade paint, make sure you're applying your paint a little bit thicker. Um, you'll have a bit more of an opaque coverage if you do this, or you might need to apply two coats of your student grade paint. All right, doing great. Pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're making a bit lighter yellow green. So you can see where I added some more yellow into the green and applying some more colors on top. I did wait for this to dry so that way it's a bit more of an opaque coverage as I apply a second layer. And with acrylic paint, it dries in about 15 minutes. You can even set it outside in the sun and it'll dry a little bit faster. All right, now grabbing some straight yellow, kind of putting it on the top, kind of thick, wipe my brush off, and then using light pressure, I'm gonna blend some of that yellow very sparingly into the other shades of green. 
So I'm not moving my brush a whole lot on top of it. I want to keep some of that more intense yellow. But I do want to blend it into the other shades of green. Now grabbing some of that direct green and giving a bit more of a darker shadow on the bottom of the canvas, on the bottom of this grassy hill that our tree is going to be hanging out on. Again, kind of using light pressure as it moves into that middle green shade. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. Do let everything dry. And we're gonna move down to the pointy brush and black paint. And we're gonna put our tree trunk in first, then our branches, and then we'll put our flowers on top of the branches. So as you're using the pointy brush, Mind the pressure of your brush. Light pressure is going to create a skinnier line, or a little bit more pressure is going to create a wider line. And just kind of play with this and get comfortable with the pressure. If you happen to make a wider line than you wanted, that's okay. That just happens to be where your painting is right now. If you need to, you can add a touch of water to your paint. Uh, to increase the fluidity and make it a little bit easier to make some of those skinnier lines. But you never want your brush dripping wet with water. So a little bit of water helps the fluidity. Or if you're using um, student grade paint that is a bit more on the cheaper side, it may already be very runny to begin with. Do not add water to that. Um, you do want to just kind of find your balance with enough water and enough paint. And each person has a slightly different balance with that. Again, you're adding your branches. Some are thick, some are skinny. Um, as you move into smaller branches off of, smaller twigs off of these branches, just keep them uh, skinny. If you need to use a toothpick or a single haired bristle brush, feel free to adjust the tools that you need for your painting. Uh, a lot of times for really skinny lines, a toothpick is very handy. Remember to breathe. It does not help holding your breath at this point. It actually is gonna make your hand a little bit shakier. So if it helps, exhale as you touch the canvas with your brush. That will help with some of the shakes. And again, I'm proud of you for taking time out of your day to paint. Um, it takes a lot of courage to paint at home, so you're doing a great job. I tell all my students in the studio, just the fact that you showed up and you're willing to go through the steps makes you already successful. So you're already successful just by going through this process. And you will notice that the more that you paint, the easier it gets and the more comfortable you get with your tools. So don't let this be your only painting um, of the year or of the month. I want you to paint on a regular basis. Our lives are not getting any less stressful, so it is up to you to find your creative outlets to get by and be comfortable in this world, in this society. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. And I do want you to fully let the black paint dry before we move on to putting the flowers in there. And after your paint is dry, we're gonna be using that middle flat brush and pure white paint. And these are blobs. These are cherry blossom blobs. And it's much easier to paint a blob as a first time painter than it is to paint an actual flower. So you can see here that I'm kind of making four circles or four dots that overlap each other. And if you need to use the small pointy brush instead, feel free to do that. As the blossoms are closer to the main tree trunk, they are generally bigger. And then as they make their way to the edges of the branches, sometimes they're a little bit smaller. So you might be just making a few little dots as you get to the smaller uh, cherry blossoms, smaller flowers on our tree. But you definitely want your black paint dry before you move into this step. 
because you don't want any of the black paint mixing with the white. You want to keep this pretty bright white. We will be putting a light pink and red in the center of each of these blossoms to make it indicative of the cherry blossoms. So you're doing a great job. Keep going. And once you've got your tree pretty filled up with all your blossoms, I want you to look at your painting from about five to 10 feet away and look at it from that distance. This is the general viewing distance for most things in life and most things that we look at on the wall. We're looking at it from a distance. And it does look different from that distance compared to the two feet in front of you while you're painting it. So as you're in the creative process, get in that habit of looking at your artwork from various perspectives. Remember to breathe. Relax, you're doing a great job. This is coming along very, very nicely. And as you get into those smaller branches, just maybe a little dots, little hints that we've got some blossoms or buds about ready to open up. And again, maybe it's windy. Maybe there's some of those petals that are floating off the tree. Maybe some of them are hanging out on the ground. Your call, how many blossoms you want on your tree, how many you want on the ground, what you, uh, the direction you want them flowing in. Make this what you feel inclined to do. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna make a light pink to go in the center of each of these little cherry blossoms. And the pink can be any shade that you want. You can see here that I'm making it a few times. Um, a tiny amount of red goes a long way to make your shade of pink that you want. So start off with a small amount and add more until you get to the shade that you like. If you go too dark, just make a new pile and repeat the process. And we're literally just putting a dot of pink in the center of each of these flowers. And that just kind of gives it the feel of that cherry blossom. Again, remember to breathe. You're doing great. It's looking good. Hopefully you're a little more relaxed. All right, pause the video, take another progress photo. We're going to be adding some grass on this hill and around the base of the tree. So I'm using that straight green and either your pointy brush or your medium flat brush and making little dash marks starting on the hill and those dash marks moving up. And think of each dash mark as a blade of grass. And every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint because you're going to kind of get in a groove but unless you keep grabbing paint, you're not actually gonna be applying anything to your canvas. And if you're using student grade paint, you do wanna, again, apply this kind of thick so that way it's opaque enough to cover on top of the other colors. So if you're looking at your blades of grass and they don't look opaque enough, just repeat the process with thicker paint. And here you can see that I'm adding a little bit of the straight yellow to be a bit of a highlight. And I am putting that right on top of the already wet green paint. So they might mix a little bit together. And you can go back and forth between the green, yellow, and mixture of the two. And you could either fill up the entire hill with your blades of grass, which I've had some of my students do, or just in a few um, sporadic sections like I will do on the video. Completely your call. But I'm really proud of you again for painting. You did a great job. Hopefully you are enjoying the process and already planning for the next painting that you wanna do. Again, remember to look at your painting from a distance, see how it's looking, and don't be upset if you like your painting more from that distance compared to two feet in front of your face. Uh, 
Most things in life look better from a distance and artwork is not excluded from that concept. All right, you guys, great job. I am so proud of you for painting. I hope you enjoyed the process enough to do it again. And again, I hope you are more relaxed now than at the beginning of your painting. So great job. Thanks for painting with me. And until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you had a great time and I hope your paintings turned out really nice. Hopefully you're a little more relaxed now than maybe at the beginning of the process and you should be very proud of yourselves. I'm proud of you for painting at home. Uh, like I said in the intro, make sure that you find a creative outlet on a monthly basis and just keep building the skills that you are currently learning. You do get better with more practice. As you're uploading your videos and uh, photos to social media, please tag me, paint with lovejoy, or email me your pictures, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, it really makes my day when I get your emails and see the student photos and see what you do at home. And it also gives me a lot of motivation to continue to make videos for this channel. So please let me know how you're doing. So again, thanks so much for painting with me today. I'm really honored to be a part of your creative process and I do look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Yeah.